Darius Slayton, a 2019 fifth round pick for the New York Giants that came up in his rookie year alongside his rookie quarterback Daniel Jones exploding onto the scene and giving Giants fans hope of a future wide receiver with the stats that he put up in their first season without their star wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. is somebody that Giants fans right now seem to have lost faith in and don't even believe that he could start. We need to talk. In his 2019 rookie season, the 6'1", 190 pound speedster out of Auburn posted 740 receiving yards with 8 touchdowns for the Big Blue G-Men in just 14 games and 9 starts. Along with this was 84 targets and 48 receptions for a catch percentage of 57.1 in a season that it was very clear he was the favorite target of Daniel Jones, the rookie quarterback. And this wasn't by any surprise because both of these guys worked their way ups in that offseason from scout team to second team to then first team together. They built a bond, a strong quarterback to receiver bond. And it was very clear that if there was one person Daniel would throw it up to just to have them catch it in any situation that year, he would have selected Darius Slayton. And that sort of continued into 2020, where Slayton was still, when on the field, one of DJ's favorite targets. The only other person that really had a similar relationship with DJ was Sterling Shepard. With that being said, Slayton did end up posting uh, 751 yards and 3 touchdowns in 16 games and 15 starts. Off of 96 targets, he caught 50 of them, leading to a catch percentage of 52.1. Very similar season to his rookie year. In fact, he had more yards than his rookie year. But of course, the major issue that fans look at and see here was not only the decrease in touchdowns, but the fact that he only improved very slightly statistically in a year where he was featured more. In a year where he started almost all the games, in the year where he came into it as possibly the number one receiver for the Giants. But that's where the problem lies. The problem lies in the optics, the expectations for Darius Slayton. Fans once again just had way too high expectations for a player that had a good season in their rookie year. Darius Slayton at the end of the day is a fifth round pick and no matter what you say, we ended up getting a steal in the fifth round because he is a great number two wide receiver. This expectation and this narrative that he was going to be a great number one for the Giants was kind of doomed from the start. He did have a great rookie season, but not many teams had anything on him in general. And we saw that when matched up against these number one corners and when he was featured as a number one receiver, which wasn't all the games, by the way, and we'll get into the game logs a little bit, that he just wasn't that guy. Okay. You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. And 2020 in general just wasn't anybody's season for the Giants except for the defense. The offense was terrible. We give Daniel Jones, with good reason, a pass for some of the things that happened in 2020. The offensive line was not good. Our offensive coordinator was quite terrible. And the passing game all around, which involves everybody, just wasn't doing anything. Why don't we give the same to Slayton? Now, I will say this, Slayton does need to do a better job of gaining separation as does every single wide receiver that was in that wide receiving core last year. But Jason Garrett, the offensive coordinator, wasn't doing him any favors very early on in the season. There were multiple times where fans, including myself, in game in the first half of the season were saying, where is Darius Slayton? Why isn't he being featured? Why is Slayton not the first read when Daniel Jones looks up? In fact, a lot of the times, he was the very last read. And with the way the offensive line was being bombarded, just is not going to work out because there's not enough time for Daniel Jones to look over there and get the ball to him. And then, of course, if the offensive coordinator wasn't messing up or when Darius Slayton himself wasn't making a mistake, um, our quarterback was making mistakes as well. For example, with the Tampa Bay game where Slayton was open twice down the field and he was just overthrown. Even then, if you go and you compare his game logs from 19 to 20, they're very similar. Slayton is kind of an inconsistent guy when it comes to wide receiver. In 2019, he only had two games above 100 receiving yards 
and then in 2020 it was literally the same two games once again you hope for improvement but you see the same kind of weird distribution of the yardage and games where he just disappears in in fact i could argue that he stayed consistent from his rookie year to sophomore year but here's why he's going to be better in his third year in the nfl for much of the same reason that we expect our quarterback to take a step forward so will darius slayton now we already established he's not a number one guy and that's just something giants fans love to do have high expectations for players we did it with will hernandez as well will hernandez a second round pick whose ceiling is honestly just a really good guard in the nfl is currently an average guard I'm not sure if he could still hit that ceiling of really good, but some fans had expectations of him being an all-pro, and it seemed the same thing with Darius Slayton. After one good rookie season, they wanted him to be a top 10 receiver in the NFL, and that's just not what he is. Remember, he was a fifth round pick, and we're already getting more than what we drafted for, which is a good thing in and of itself. But to the additions in the offseason in Kenny Galladay and Kadarius Tony, specifically Galladay, Slayton will no longer have to bear that burden of being the number one outside threat. And he will have a legitimate number one outside threat that would be lining up beside him, that would take away that strong cornerback play from him, and that defenses will have to try and cover in some way, shape, or form. Kadarius Tony, should he see the field very early on in the slot, will be taking that number two corner, whether they're a slot cornerback or not. And that leaves Slayton with basically the worst corner on the field, which he is too good to be mashed up against. He's not a number one, but he's not that bad uh, to the point where the worst corner on the field is going to cover him. He's going to burn that guy. Even if Kadarius doesn't start and Stone Shepard is out there and Shepard's matched up against the slot, you know, they got Slayton against the second outside guy. That's a perfect matchup because that's where he belongs. He's going to feast. And let's not forget, he will get Saquon back. And even in his rookie year where he had kind of an injured Saquon a little bit, he didn't have the Saquon of 2018. We had the Saquon that had the high ankle sprain. Should Saquon come back healthy, which I have faith in, and should he deliver with this running game, that is also going to help out the receiving game. All in all, I think Darius Slayton is going to be just fine for the Giants. I think that he's going to work out to be one of our best draft picks down the road when it comes to value. And I think he's going to have a third year. I just think Giants fans got a little bit too into themselves with putting expectations on a player. And then when he feel, fails to meet those expectations, they kind of crash and burn a little bit. I've been guilty of it in the past as well. But Slayton's going to be just fine. He is what he is. And that is a good number two wide receiver. And we'll see how the Giants use him and if he continues to be that. A little bit of a different we need to talk episode, but one I felt that I needed to make. Put your thoughts down below, let me know what you all think. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.